Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rob Marsiglio, sales representative with Keller Williams Referred Urban Realty out here in Durham Region, helping the great people of this part of the province and do my best to bring you weekly content. We took the last week off because of the holidays. Happy New Year's to you all, but we are back this week. Treb Market Watch data is out, so I'm going to break some of those numbers down for you. And then do a little comparison, first half of the years versus second half of the years historically. See how 2023 stacked up versus every year going back to 2008. Right into the market watch data, and this is the year over year summary that Treb provides each and every year. So we can see sales for December were up 11.5%. New listings were down from last December by 6.6%. Active listings coming in at 10,370. I've got a bit of a bone to pick with this number. I feel like it's a little deflated versus what I was actually seeing from the MLS. I'll try to get some answers for you as to why there's such a discrepancy, but anyways, the number they've reported is 10,370. Last year at the same time, it was around 8,700. So we're up 19.3%. And our average price for a home right across Treb is up 3.2%. And you can see properties are taking longer to sell. A listing days on market is up about 19%, whereas our property days on market is up 22.5%. And on this channel, I don't usually get too into the nitty gritty into the weeds on average prices, but here it is compared to November. So our prices were relatively flat from November to December after we saw a big dip from October to November. Uh, when you look compared to last December, which is this dot over here, we're up 3.25%. But if you're going to go back to 2021, and just before things really took off into the February stretch, this is December here, and we we're down 6.3% right across the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. As you know, I don't like to focus so much on prices because I feel like each pocket is different. I like to look at more of the sales activity, listings activity picture. So let's dive into those comparing how last year went versus what we'd see in the kind of median or average year. The big story was that sales were down all year. December was no different, although the gap did close between you know the average year going back to 2008 and what we saw in 2023. So 3,444 sales reported according to the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board. And like I said, the gap really was the widest. In this October reading, it shrunk a little bit in November and then really tightened up in December. On the new listing side, we actually went from above seasonal in November, right around seasonal for new listings that hit the market. You can remember, sellers were kind of slow early in the year to come to market. We didn't hit kind of those seasonal new listing numbers until around June. Then we followed trend pretty nicely ever since then with new listings coming in at just 3,886 for December. So quick math between the new listings number and the sales number shows that you know there were 400 more new listings that came to market than there were sales reported. But as you can see, we did not have a net gain of 400 properties on the market. We had active inventory really fall off quite drastically according to the TREB numbers. So from November all the way down to December, it was almost a 40% drop off in active inventory. And you can see we were below seasonal levels of inventory early in the year. September, we kind of went over what we'd expect to see, you know, inventory grew as we've reported on all the way up through till October. We'd usually expect to see this peak in any given year at around May, but inventory grew until October, then had this precipitous drop off from November into December. So what is the reason for this big drop off in active inventory if sales are still lagging new listings? It is the removal. So this is not from Treb Market Watch. They don't provide termination data in the Treb Market Watch. This is just from the MLS. I've done a daily search as to how many removals are reported and a removal is a termination, an expiry or a suspension, how many new listings were reported, how many sales. So you can see the MLS for the GTA, Halton, Peel, Durham, York and Toronto matches up pretty nicely to the numbers that were reported by the Toronto Regional Real Estate Board in terms of sales and new listings. But these removals, almost 6,400 removals. So that kind of represents that 6,000 active inventory drop off that we saw from November into December. In my opinion, those are the most important numbers that we got out of the Treb market watch. Comparing things year over year, comparing things month over month could be useful if somebody's in the market, but just to see how the market is acting compared to what we are kind of used to seeing in an average or a median year, I think it's a good exercise that can explain maybe why prices are doing what they are doing. You know, prices were relatively flat because sellers weren't accepting the lower prices that maybe buyers were asking. They would only sell if they got a price they wanted, which held prices up. If sellers were expecting kind of the bid that buyers were making, I have a theory that that average price would have come down a lot more. Enough of the market watch. Let's do a really quick recap of what happened in 2023. And again, we're going to call this segment the tale of two halves. We're going to compare the first half of a year in real estate to the second half of a year in real estate. 
going all the way back to 2008. We're gonna start with this chart, which is the total new listings entered using the Treb Market Watch criteria. What do I mean by Treb Market Watch criteria? I mean the areas that Treb pulls data from, so the geographic locations, as well as the housing types. They don't include every single property type in the Treb Market Watch data, just specific ones. So we've used those criteria to put these charts together. And here we can see that new listings entered Usually we'd expect to see things peak in the first half for listings entered. And then we have a shorter fall market than a spring market. So the second half of the year sees new listings. 2020 broke that trend because of COVID. Things shut down really in March, April, May, it was really slow. We saw a lot of inventory come to market later on in the year, but 2023 is the second time since 2008, maybe further back. I didn't go further back than this for uh, putting this data together, but you can see that again, the second half of the year was busier in terms of new listings than the first half of the year was. On the sales side of things, uh, you know, pretty standard for what we're used to seeing. The only two times that we've seen sales pick up in the second half of the year are 2009 and 2020. We saw things drop off from the first half to the second half in 2023. It's when we look at it on a per new listings basis that you can see just how slow the second half of 2023 was. I'd argue that the first half on a per new listings basis was pretty average what we've seen going back to 2008, but this is definitely the lowest, coming in at lower than 0.4 sales per new listing for the second half of the year in 2023. The other thing we talked about earlier on in the video, I've been talking about this a lot on the channel lately as well, is listing removals. Again, your terminations, expiries, and suspensions. You can see that the second half of 2023 is actually the third highest number of listing removals that we've seen in a second half of a year going back to 2008. So 2008 was higher, 2017 was higher, then we have 2023 coming in in third place after a relatively average first half of 2023. And again, breaking that down per new listing, we can see that 2023 is right up there with 2022 was actually a pretty big second half for listing terminations and 2008 surpassed both of those years. So what I wanna drive home with that exercise is that the first half of the year, although sales numbers were suppressed, listing numbers were suppressed, it was still kind of more in line with what you'd expect to see, kind of the relation between those two elements, even, even terminations. But it's the second half of the year where things really slowed down. The Bank of Canada did their rate hikes right in the middle of the year, which kind of nicely coincided with things really slowing down, uh, with buyers feeling that pinch of affordability, even more so not being able to give sellers what they want for their homes. So again, this bid ask spread is a little bit too wide right now. We're gonna to need to see either buyers make up the difference coming up or sellers adjust their expectations and come down to really get this market moving again. Let's wrap the video up with one more chart. It's the same first half, second half exercise, but we're looking at average sale prices of existing homes. Again, this is according to Treb Market Watch data. Six times going back to 2008, have we seen higher sale prices in the second half of the year versus the first half, and that is 2009. We saw it again in 2013, we saw it in 2016, then we saw it every year from 2019 to 2021. 2022 and 2017 represented kind of the biggest corrections from the first half to the second half. In 2023, we were kind of back on trend. Lower weighted average sale prices in the second half of the year versus the first half of the year. One thing you'll notice from this chart though is that when you compare the second half of one year to the first half of the next year, there hasn't been one year where prices were lower in the following year's first half than they were in the previous year's second half. So all that being said, based on history and based on market activity and buyer sentiment in the greater Toronto area, it wouldn't shock me to see the reported average sale price in the first half of 2024 be higher than the second half of 2023. As always, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Will prices increase a little bit early this year versus late last year? Or are we gonna see things kind of flatten off continue to fall off. The argument for the flattening off and falling off is obviously affordability and those seller expectations. You know, if sellers finally do come down to reality a little bit and start accepting prices that buyers are offering, yeah, we could see prices come down significantly in the first half of this year. I'm not banking on it, but again, I'm interested to hear what you think. That's all for the first video of 2024. Again, I hope you all had a wonderful holiday. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. Until we speak again, please stay safe. And cheers. Hey there, I really appreciate you watching this video all the way to the end. If you enjoyed it, I've got another video for you right here on the screen. And you know, while you're here, maybe just click on my face, subscribe to, I don't want you to miss anything going forward.